M. Rossiano. If a girl looks like me, I'll go for her. I mean, come on. You've got to respect that. <laughs> and Michael Lucas. Like, it's not socially acceptable to go out without your pants on. We've all accepted the fact that pants are necessary. This is M. Salation. It's the perfect level of it absorbs you, you can obsess over it, and then still have a wonderful night's sleep. Yeah, yeah. I love it. I love it. I love it. You're in M. Salation. Well, hello there. Welcome to M Salation. My name is M Rossiano. I'm a singer, a writer, a stand-up comedian, a podcaster, a maximalist power queen, and together with my best friend since I was 11, screenwriter Mr. Michael Lucas, I bring you this podcast each week. This podcast, which, God, I love. I love it so much. I love making it. I can't believe I get to do it. I'll never take it for granted. <sighs> anyway, just having a moment of gratitude trying to do that more. Isn't that gross? And people say, I'm just trying to have a moment of gratitude. But I am. I am. I'm doing it. I didn't care. I didn't care how gross I sound. How are you? How are you? How are you? Genuinely checking with yourself right now. Close your eyes. Don't close your eyes if you're driving. And exhale. You got, I got, you with me. I got you. Michael's going to be here soon. You've got an hour of just sitting with your pals, having a laugh. We're not going to challenge you at all today. It is a pop culture bonanza. Obviously, there's been a lot going on. MTV VMAs, the Met Gala red carpet, the Met Gala after party, the Met Gala after after party, uh, Venice Film Festival. So many things. So many things have been going on and it's just been exciting. <laughs> So we're just going to do a whole Britney Spears got engaged and deleted her Instagram. So that's a whole thing. That's all it is this week. Um, if you're not up to date with it all, don't worry. Just roll along with us. It'll be cool. I'll make sure my channel puts all the photos up of everything we reference on our Instagram, the Insulation Podcast Instagram. So that's what you're in for today. Um, now I have, I have a list of things to check off with you. I've written a list so we get through it all. First thing I want to talk about is what I've been watching on the telly. I've been watching, I've really been immersing myself in niche creative like competitions for for makers. So I've been obsessed with a show called Metal Masters. If you follow me on Instagram, you'll know that. This is RuPaul's Drag Race for welders. It's the best way to describe it. I love it so much. It's such a niche skill and they build incredible sculptures flat out out of metal. And my favourite contestant is Ivan. And once you start watching it, you'll understand why I love Ivan. I'm pretty sure Ivan wrestles bears with his bare hands in his spare time just for fun, just for shits and giggles. Here comes Ivan again. I didn't come here to lose. I've been loving it so much. And I've also started the Great Pottery Throwdown, which is chef's kiss. Like, oh, my God, one of the judges cries every week at a different piece. And it's not like it's this, It's so funny. He's this big guy with questionable hair and he's like a pottery master. He's very good. And someone will bring up their plate and he'll be like, oh, my God, I'm sorry, I just need a moment. I just, that, the the pattern that you have designed is just, it's so whimsical. It, like, he, he gets teary. He's worse than me on Australian Idol circa 2004 when I would just cry at the drop of a hat. Like, he is me on Australian Idol, but in a show about pottery. It's absolutely <laughs> brilliant. Fantastic, mate. Absolutely. I mean, I was crying before you even <laughs> took it off the bench. It's brilliant. It looks fantastic. It's the best thing you've ever done. It's the best thing you've ever made. I love it. Well, I'm off now. <laughs> <laughs> fantastic. God, I, I had to laugh. When they're, when they're doing a certain technique called pulling, it's very phallic. It's very, it's a lot of, like, some people may put, when you, initially when you see master potters and people who are pottery people, initially you, you maybe write them off as, like, quiet librarian dwelling types who just are really polite and drink tea and have bobs and wear, like, sensible cardigans. I just described myself a bit. <laughs> but they're quite, they're quite a saucy bunch. Pull in. Yeah, everyday occurrence. It's very funny. It's, uh, there's a lot of sex references in pottery. Who knew? Anyway, it's great. It's on Binge. You can watch it on Binge. And I wanted to tell you about both of those shows because they have been bringing me enormous joy. Just, just weird niche making shows. I've already watched Blown Away, the glass blowing competition, which also has a lot of sex references, the glory holes, the poking. Um, I've already done that, of course. So it's just... I've been having a really nice time watching these passionate people do the tiny niche thing they're very good at. It's so great. 
Also, it's been a big time in my house. Um, it's been a huge time for my middle daughter, Odette, and I have total permission to talk about what I'm about to talk about. Her and I discussed it. She's such a brilliant human. She's Look, she's quite a private person and that's because she's feeling very self-conscious at the moment. So she's not always on my social media. And sometimes I get messages like, oh, is Odie okay? I wish you'd show her more. And sometimes I just want to reach through the phone and pull that person's hair <laughs> because Odie... Odie's fine. Odie's so loved and taken care of and she just she's 14 and doesn't want to be shown to a quarter of a million people at the moment. Surely you understand that. Surely you understand and remember how self-conscious you were. She she feels she can't even look at photos of herself without cringing. I watch her and it's heartbreaking, but I also know it's a face. So that's why she's not on my socials. It's not because we're like locking her in a basement or she's like Harry Potter under the stairs. Although she would really love to be Harry Potter under the stairs. She loves Harry Potter. Get up. Now, Odie has had the hardest time of everyone in our house during COVID and lockdown because she is 14 and all 14-year-olds want to do is be around their friends. They don't want to be at home with us. And she's doing year nine and that's supposed to be like an off-campus experience for her school and she hasn't been able to do that. And ever since Odie was about six years old, I have been trying to figure out what's been going on for her because she's she's always had this slight disconnect with school and just I guess a bit with life. She, Her and I are very similar and I saw a lot of myself in her and we, we had her tested for dyslexia when she was six and we found out she had auditory processing disorder and, and I've had the school test her for multiple things. And then obviously this year a lot of you know I had an ADHD diagnosis. I have ADHD. I have the inattentive type and the hyperactive type. Fun, overachieving. Um, and when I was getting diagnosed and going through the process, Odette saw a lot of herself in the symptoms. And so we started about getting her diagnosed and we started getting her di- diagnosed in about February and we finally got her diagnosis in September. So it's been a really long process. And for those of you who don't know, or maybe you're going through it, getting diagnosed with ADHD is the most unfriendly thing for ADHD people to go through. It's not built for us, ironically. So if you have it, and generally, if you're going after diagnosis, you probably do. Um, it's really hard. You've got to fill out forms and show up for things and email people back. And it, so you've got Odie and I pushing through it. And it was a sludge fest because we had to reschedule things and we we're on waiting lists. And I just want to assure everybody, we did it the same as you will do it. It took a long time. I didn't use my platform or my profile to get ahead of a queue or uh, nothing. It was... It was hard and sad and tough at times, but we fucking did it. We did it. And last week during a Zoom consultation, um, we we went through a, a, like a centre for behavioural, uh, you know, specialises in diagnoses of ADHD and ASD in kids, specifically for kids. And um, we sat down with the behavioural psychologist in a Zoom meeting Odie's got an eye and Odie got a diagnosis. She has ADHD and attentive type. Again, I have her permission to tell you guys this. And I burst into tears, <laughs> and I'm getting to what you're talking about now, because I've just felt a rush of emotion. I felt this kind of mixture of relief, guilt, sadness, happiness. It was this whole like, like tornado of everything. It was like the five stages of grief in 10 seconds. And I made sure I took Odie aside later and explained why I kind of burst into tears. Um, and also, you know, a way to make my appointment about you, mum. But now I know ADHD people, I always, when people tell me a story about themselves, I always find a way to find a story about myself to relay it back to them. And I always thought that that was like a narcissistic thing. And it probably is a little bit, but I was told by my psychologist, who's an ADHD psychologist, that that's the way people who are neurodiverse relate to someone else. Because we're not very good with small talk and the and the eye contact stuff. But if something sparks in us that, that we feel like we can relate to you, we'll tell that story. <laughs> anyway, I don't know why I told you that story. I, I I didn't mean to burst into tears and I didn't mean to make Odie's appointment about me and it wasn't. It was only like 10 seconds and it was fine. And I explained to her later on, I just am so glad we have a way forward and we have an understanding and I love this label for my child. I love that my child has the ADHD label and I'll tell you why because previous to this label, the labels she had for herself were dumb, lazy, um, off at the fairies, 
stupid. Like she had all these thing, these these words floating around, and they were the they were the labels. Now those labels are gone; they're blown up because the ADHD is a reason. This is our reason, and this is something I've been chasing and fighting for since she was six years old. I, I have been relentless. I am the that her school, God love her, must be so sick of me. I just at them constantly. What are we going to do? How are we going to make this easier for her? We got our answer. And for if you are a parent who has ever had to fight for any sort of diagnosis for your child, initially, you know, they look at you, are you overreacting? Are you being too sensitive? This is too hard. To fight, to stay the course, especially if you're neurodivergent, it, and you get it and you get the diagnosis, it's just like a thousand kilogram weight came off my shoulders. It was incredible. And it's a it's a way forward and it's a happy day. It was such a happy day. I've noticed a change in her. So it's a great thing. And anytime I tell people uh, Odie's been diagnosed with ADHD, we're so pleased, we're so relieved, it gives them permission to react positively, you know, because sometimes people don't know how to react. So it's been it's been an amazing thing to happen. And, you know, this this whole pandemic and this lockdown, I don't know that I would have got a diagnosis. I don't know that Odie would have got a diagnosis. So, you know, it's, it's another kind of positive thing I'm clinging to to stay sane that's come from this. So, um, yeah, it was a massive, huge week for us last week and I'm still processing it and she's still processing it. She's about to get her braces. She's wrapped. She's just like she feel, I feel like she's getting her life together. <laughs> I dyed her hair yesterday. You know, I think if you've got a teenager and you know a teenager, they very they fold into themselves, especially at the moment, and sometimes all it takes is just for you, a parent or a friend or if you're an auntie or an uncle or whatever, just saying, hey, you want to dye your hair? Hey, you want to paint your nails? Like, uh, do you want to, like, what do we want to do? Do you want to, I don't know, wax your moustache? I don't know. <laughs> but sometimes if you if you bring up something novelty for them, like she just wanted to say, hey, you want to dye your hair? She's like, yeah. You know, because it's a bit boring at the moment. But if you've got a teenager in your life that you love and you notice they've withdrawn a bit in, go to them and offer to do something total novelty, off the wall, something they would never do. Because I just noticed she just got a spring in her step. You know, she's got a diagnosis, we've dyed her hair, she's getting her braces, you know, and it's just giving her things. I don't know. Anyway, I don't know why I've told you all that. This is a very long intro and some of you are like, oh, fuck, we don't care. But for those of you who do care, if any of you out there are chasing a diagnosis for yourself or your kid or you've got one, just keep at it. It's hard and um, I, 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 I can't make it any easier for you except that it's worth sticking to. Uh, and that the process is go to your GP, they'll refer you on. But we went to a special centre for um, the, the Northern Behavioural, I can't remember what it's called, this is my brain. But if you look up ADHD and ASD diagnosis centres for kids, that it'll come up in a, in a Google search in Melbourne. <sighs> okay, did I go through my list? Yes, that's it. I've got other things to tell you, but I'm going to wait until the outro because let's just get to the podcast. <laughs> I've got other things to tell you. Okay, that's enough from me. Thanks for being here. Play the music. M. Luciano and Michael Lucas. This is M. Salation. All right. Well, it's been a pop culture bonanza these past few days. Marcella and I have been sitting next to each other, centimetres apart, Zooming memes, not even showing each other our screens, just sending them back and forth. And Michael Lucas, I know, has been very busy. Otherwise, he would have been involved in the meme Olympics that's been going on. Have you been able to keep up, babes? Oh, I haven't been able to stop myself. I mean, Metball, VMAs, <laughs> just one thing after another, the Venice Film Festival. I don't even understand how some people got from one event to the other. Even that, I feel like I need a flowchart. I need to understand how some of them were looking so fresh when they were seen out at after-after parties. And then are just turning up looking like, you know, they've had a week's rest. I want to understand that process. That's what I want a roadmap of. <laughs> I'm sure they're offering <laughs> some sort of endorsement of a product you could buy if you want it. Well, I'll take it all and I'll bathe in it and I'll have it intravenously inserted and I'll shelve it, whatever it takes. <laughs> I also want to know what Danny Minogue's doing because that woman turned 50 this week and she glows from the inside. Her skin is so dewy, it's just like... Oh, anyway. <laughs> I know. She is impressive. She looks better She's, now than she looked back when she was in Summer Bay. How's it happened? Well, even Young Talent Time. She looks as young. <laughs> There's she a looks more carefree than she did in the This Is It 
<laughs> video clip. <gasps> Remember that? Remember that oh. film clip? And he, Julian had the blonde. Didn't he have some, did he have a blonde streak in his hair? I feel like he should have because I do remember she was in yellow. No, she did. She had the big she blonde did. streak and she was in, yeah, she was in sort of like a yellow bikini sort of rap thing. It, it, was, like a, it was like a really initial foray into Australian celebrity couple culture and no one else picked up the baton. I feel like it took until like Nicole and Keith before someone said, we're willing to take that mantle. So true. God, it was, oh, this is it. August time, I know it's the it's a real thing. Uh, yeah, look, and I still remember Jane Kennedy doing the spoof of it on the late show. There was this is shit. Remember that? Holy shit! Holy shit. <laughs> <laughs> it's the late show. Oh my god! We need parodies um, these days. It's really sad that there's no Australian parody show because this pandemic, there has been so much to take on, and we just haven't. Where's Jane and Magda and all of those people? Marg, I know what I was doing with her actually, but um, yeah, yeah we need some. <laughs> I want to see mate. the spoofs. Anyway, I know there's so much content, but like it has been a, a wild and crazy week. And but the one thing that's really captured my imagination is the sexual renaissance and rebirth of Megan Fox and Kourtney Kardashian. Now, there's a sentence I didn't think I'd be saying, but here I am. I've been <laughs> viewing them both turning up to these events. Megan Fox, of course, actress, <laughs> she was married to Brian Austin Green from uh, Beverly Hills 90210 for 10 years. They had three children and then very abruptly the marriage ended in 2020. And then very shortly after she was seen out with young rapper, white rapper, Machine Gun Kelly. And she is clearly getting the best stoinking sexy. <laughs> She's getting the best Rogering what, what, what are the telltale signs for you? What is what is she radiating? What is she emitting that makes you realise this? She's like she's thirty five, so and a mother of three. So straight away, I'm drawn to her. I'm drawn to her mm. having this moment. She is just glowing, and she's wearing a lot of like mesh, and she had a diamante g string on with a thin layer of skin. Her um, like an, um like a light pinky, I guess. I want to go for mesh that was also bedazzled, but left nothing to the imagination. But I didn't want anything left to the imagination. She's <laughs> looking shiny and sinewy and hard bodied, and like she's not exercising. She's just having a lot of sex. <laughs> and I didn't I'm even just... realize like. This I didn't even I wasn't even tracking. I mean, if this is a renaissance, I don't know when the dark ages were. I was kind of well, lost I the think, bit that she fell away. Well, the dark ages were in that she wasn't really you didn't really see her a lot on red carpets. And she was okay. if she was there, she's always she's always had a bit of I mean, she's always been a bit rock. But she mm. kind of went down the Angelina Jolie route of I kind of put them in the same energy space. She for a while had Angelina Jolie vibes and energy. Kind I don't of edgy see her action. working with the UN as much as Angelina Jolie. No, but I'm more saying the aesthetic of the edgy right, of course, action yeah, star is also inc- incredibly glamorous. Mm. But she had the, the marriage to Brian Austin Green and she was having children. She spent 10 years having three kids. Like she would have been pregnant and breast like for a long time. And then she's been in that cocoon that, and then she's emerged from the chrysalis and she's spreading her mesh wing by diamante just wings and flying. And now I'm seeing her at the Met Gala the next night from after the VMA. She had this red rack of lamb PVC bedazzled situation going on. <laughs> and I'm just looking at her going, girl, I fucking see you, mate. Like, yes. And Kourtney Kardashian, same, mother of three, 42, split up from her husband and is dating a rock drummer, Travis Barker from Blink-182. She also was there next to Megan Fox. They presented an award throwing to the both of their boyfriends. New York, I need you to get extra loud for our future baby daddies, Machine Gun Kelly and Travis Barker. And she was there in, like, leather and she was smiling and and I was just like, these two women, these two mo- single mothers of three are fucking getting <laughs> good dick. So <laughs> I love how much you refer to the rack of lamb. Look, I'm just going to go and say I don't think the designers or the stylists use that phrase. <laughs> I don't think it's any back. ingenue has reacted positively to someone saying, do you want to look like a wreck of land? It's a glamorous wreck of land. You know what I mean? 
I do know what you mean. You mean like the like the the sort of the cross the cross over yeah. here, like you do with the string. <laughs> Good, yeah. Thankfully, no rosemary. Like when you when you're securing it. the roast so it doesn't fall apart, you mm. wrap the the twine around it, and you get like little delicate bulge things and mm. all of the fashion that's in now because in the 90s you'll recall you may recall that that look of wearing a kitten heel and then wrapping a thin leather strap all the way up the all the way up your calf oh is that not and, fashionable now <laughs> oh no i think that's what's coming back in that okay. very 90s yeah so it was it was like it was like the christian it was like the extras from christina aguilera's dirty film clip this is how mm. i'm describing the red carpet the vmas that was, it was a lot of chaps. No one wore pants. And I was really glad for that. I noticed like Normani, there, there were quite a few artists who turned up in big jackets with their legs showing. And I'm down for this trend because my legs are very good, but my top half has seen three children. <laughs> so if I can somehow get into the bulky jacket, no pants trend, mm. I mean, I'm here for it. <laughs> Are you finding that the red carpet of the VMAs and the Met Gala are kind of like merging in vibe? Like to me, all these pictures were coming up and I couldn't really discern, I don't know, everything was just, what was the theme of the Met Gala this year? It was American, um, it was Americana, like what it is to be American. I can't remember the exact term, but some people did it like literally Debbie Harry turned up in a big skirt made of the American flag. But then some people like JLo really missed the mark. I can't believe I'm saying this. She was my worst dressed at that (gasps) gala. JLo was wearing Ralph Lauren, who is an American designer. So some people kind of interpreted it that way. Um, But for me, I mean, yeah, it was a strange, it, it was a strange Met Gala because there were too many TikTok stars there. <laughs> and I understand yes, why I Beyonce think that's and what's Jay... giving it an MTV vibe for me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There was a lot of people that... I just feel like if you're Beyonce walking in on a red carpet and you look over and there's some 17-year-old TikToker that has not earned her spot, mm. hasn't come, like she's just got a lot of followers, you'd be like, why, why am I in the same airspace as this person? So... I understand why Beyonce and Jay, and they were very obviously like during the Met Gala, they were posting pictures on their yacht and she was looking amazing. And, yeah, I it was a weird old like, Met yeah, Gala, to be I, honest. I, I feel like we should have a little word to Anna Wintour because I want it to be you basically you have to be at least halfway to an EGOT before you get on that red carpet. You cannot get there because you've put on a viral TikTok. I mean, that's... I agree. Not enough. I agree. The standard, I don't want it to ever be a thing that I would have a hope in hell of attending. No. Do you know what I mean? Like, but I probably could have got an invite this year. It's just like, (laughs) yeah, yeah, I've got a blue tick. I'm verified. Yeah, sure, let me in. I want it to be rare air. I want it to be just billionaires only like, or, or, or just people who are extremely famous and creative and artistic and amazing. Yeah, I, I don't know. But, look, Rihanna did turn up eventually. She was very late. People thought she wasn't going to come at all. And then she turned up with ASAP Rocky. Who I just They are the cutest couple. I love them so, so much. And she had this big, black, um, stunning, like, statement collar, this taffeta. It was incredible. Um, but she, what I'm more interested in is Rihanna had the after-after party for the Met Yeah, Carla. that's such a yeah. Rihanna move. So... You don't want to have the after party, which was at the Boom Boom Room. Everyone who was invited to Rihanna's after party, the after party started at 4 a.m., which which I can get on board for that. If I'm allowed to sleep, I get up about 5 every day anyway. So if we can start starting yeah. parties at 4 a.m. I don't know that that's quite what Rihanna had in mind. <laughs> I don't think she said to the guests, if you just want a little kip after you put the kids to bed and then rock on up. But well, that's kind of my dream. Like I would get, I would set my alarm for about, you don't want to be there at four, set my alarm for about quarter past three, I'll go for my run, have my cold shower, take my ADHD medication, get dressed, <laughs> kind of rock up at 20 past four. Do you, you, do know, you, like you it, <laughs> sleep under your anxiety blanket for a while? Well, it's the Met Gala. I could really just wear the anxiety blanket. Could. I could have my dress designed with weight in it. You yeah. know what I mean? Like it could, mm. it could be a thing. But the thing I love most about the Rihanna after after party is that she made her grand arrival to her own song. Oh. I'll be disappointed if you don't one day host a party where you do something equivalent. It, I mean, that's just... 
I love that it was at 4 a.m. I really feel like she should keep pushing it every year until we eventually hit a point when she's like 70 and, and her and her party begins like on a yacht at 11 a.m. three days later. Oh, and you just you just have dream. to stay awake the whole time if you want to get there. <laughs> Before we move off of all of this kind of, uh, I want to go back to, I found a quote that Machine Gun Kelly, Megan Fox's current boyfriend, who I was talking about, how she's getting the best sex of her life. Listen, this is how he just described her. This is him describing Megan Fox. She's like the earth. When it's summer, it's the hottest summer. When it's winter, it's the most amazing chill. In the fall and spring, it's a beautiful transition. She is unlike any person I've ever met in my life. Our love is real. Wow. How romantic. Has Scott ever said that about you? No, no, no. The nicest thing he's ever said, as previously discussed, is when he was stretching my hamstring muscles, he said, wow, your muscles are really elastic. Uh, Thanks, mate. Well, that to be fair, if he'd put it, if he'd used a seasonal metaphor, he was close. (laughs) I love how you do your research, how you put in the time. If someone uh, starts dating a celebrity that you are following, then I love how you do your research on them and put in the time and welcome them in. I do. The fray. No, but I do. I don't know. I just feel like M- Megan Fox and Kourtney Kardashian, there's a lot of us out there between, you know, the, say the age of 35 and 50, and we're kind of coming to grips with the fact that we're not in the first half of our life anymore, women especially, mm. and then when, and you worry that, and also don't don't worry, the media makes us invisible. Apparently we don't exist after 40. And there's you're that very, very famous much in the first half of your life, I want to say. Don't tell me you're not going to live until oh, so long. Oh, no, I will. I will, but it's more like society has us believe as a woman when you get to a certain age, you, that famous Tina face gets, you know, you're unfuckable. Therefore, mm. you, you're uninteresting to society. And I think when when I see women of my age bucking that trend... I feel like, yes, it's like, go, good. Let's expand the boundaries of what we're being told. So, but but I isn't never it a little bit powerful. like they are bucking that trend, but because they look exactly, like you can't tell. Like, I mean, J-Lo, yeah, amazing. She's in her 50s, but that she looks the exact same way that she looked when she was like 24. <laughs> is it really a breakthrough know. or is it just proving proving if you can completely not age a single day? Wouldn't the rock star <laughs> thing be if someone came and looked actually old and was still launching it up, then, then. I feel like then. I could find an example of that. I don't know. I just feel like the fact, and also sometimes it doesn't matter how you look. Sometimes you do get into a mindset of I'm a yes. mother of three. Do you know what yeah. I mean? It, it doesn't matter how tight your ass is. You still you still feel very like oh, a bit mumsy. I'm sure yeah. Megan Fox during that decade with Brian Austin Green had she moments had a moment where she, somewhere. yeah, yeah. No, I'm celebrating them. I'm living for it. What I uh, what I am also living for is Nicki Minaj did not <sighs> turn up to the Met Gala um, because the Met Gala required everyone to be fully vaccinated to attend and she is not and because her <laughs> cousin had a friend who got swollen nuts and became impotent and because he became imp- impotent, his fi- fiancé dumped him weeks before their wedding. So... She's like, I'm not coming because of my cousin's friend's swollen nuts. Guess what, bitch? <laughs> Coronavirus. <laughs> <laughs> what a devastating blow for the for the for the mission to vaccinate the world. Now that we've got this evidence from Nicki Minaj's cousin's friend in Trinidad. <laughs> it's like, why about just don't go? Sometimes no is a complete sentence. Yeah. Did she need to go into that? Did anyone ask her? Nikki, what is the specific reason you're not going to the Met Gala? I want to know. <laughs> God, I love her. But it's just wild. And as we all know, if anyone at school was like saying, yeah, I'm my cousin, my cousin's friend, straight away, if anyone starts a story with my cousin, it's oh, like, yeah. bullshit. Oh. <laughs> it, she may as well have said at the end of the tweet, ask my mum. Like, honestly, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's as bad as credibility. But <laughs> Remember when anyone and I would just question love your school, the you, symptom can't. as well, swollen balls. Like it, I could have sat here for 72 hours trying to think of the most ridiculous symptom to put yeah. on a reason to not get vaxxed, but that's, that takes the cake. Flat out. And also Western Sydney Health. Did you ever think Western Sydney Health and Nicki Minaj would be involved in the same social media storm? No, but Western I'm delighted Health, that they are. Yeah, me too. Tweeted... Um, <laughs> We promise to leave the rapping to Nicki Minaj if she leaves medicine to doctors and science. 
Ah. <laughs> And just, I'd be quite interested case, to yeah. see some of the Western health professionals try and rap, though, if I'm honest. I'd be much more interested to see that than I would be interested to see Nicki Minaj try and administer any kind of medical assistance. If Cherry Chant wanted to just start dropping some rhymes, I'm, in fact, maybe that's what they need to shake up those press conferences. Well, haven't they stopped or are they back on again? I can't keep up because I know Gladys said no more press conferences. Weird. And then she did yeah, front why? up to one. Mm. Yeah, I don't understand because we can all tell that Dan has, like, scaled it back, but he didn't make some big announcement saying that it's he's just shit comes every so often or no, maybe it's every second day or something. I don't know what it is, but mm. I don't understand why she made a big announcement about it. It was just, like, begging for everyone to be up in arms. Anyway, and then she but, turned up rap. anyway. Yeah. I, I don't know. You know. It is sad because who knows, they might have asked them a question about Nicki Minaj's cousin's swollen balls and we will never see Gladys and Kerry have to respond to that question. Oh. I'm so sad. That is actually, I hope someone asked Dan that. I hope someone asked Brett Sutton. Can, excuse me, Brett, just uh, quoting a source that says their balls swelled swelled up after the uh, vaccine. Can you confirm or deny that this is something that happens? Various health professionals have said. (laughs) We may need an extended description. Um, (laughs) People have clarified that COVID actually is a fertility risk. If you got COVID, there's a chance that you could, you're, you're, yeah, um, just, yeah. Let's just put it out there categorically that this is not a side effect. If you're worried about your penis and your balls. Yeah, it's your, yeah. You're better off I suggest Nicki Minaj's. (laughs) Yeah. I suggest something. Nicki Minaj's cousin's friend yeah. may have other things going on if he's got swollen balls and he's impotent. I, and I'm surprised at the rate at which he was able to test if he was impotent or not. Do you think he had a fertility test? Was that something that happened? Can they? How does he know? And, and, and does he have regular fertility tests? Like, did he know going? Or oh, maybe he had fathered <laughs> lots of children. I don't know. We need more detail. I want more. In fact, this just is a window into a Minaj family saga that I'm happy to keep looking through if she's going to give us any more details, as much as I'm disturbed by the potential (laughs) fake medical (laughs) advice she's giving. I am riveted by, and I want to know about, you know, the future of this relationship. Well, I mean, it was weeks out from the wedding Um, and now it's over. Did they put that in the official, like, is that what all the guests got? (laughs) Due to a case of swollen balls. Massive nuts. <laughs> we can no longer Maybe. proceed with the nuptials. <laughs> Before we move off the Met Gala, though, we do need to discuss, and even though she had her whole entire body covered, still getting spoke about the most, Kim Kardashian. Hot babe. This is for me. She turned up looking like a Dementor from Harry Potter. She was in her gimp outfit, which she's been rolling out different versions of at different events. So mm. this is a thing she's doing. It's designed by by Balenciaga, who she works very closely with and who Kanye actually put her on to Balenciaga. Like he introduced her to the creative director. Now she was on the red carpet Head to toe, everything covered, face covering. Uh, we don't want to talk about there's a whole already a bunch of I'm not even going to talk about that. That's too hard. Anyway, (laughs) she's there. Everything's covered up. And then on the red carpet also is a man next to her, completely all covered up, also head to toe black, and everyone assumed similar build to Kanye, similar height. Everyone's like, oh, they're announcing that they're back together on the red carpet. You were certainly thinking that. that. (laughs) They are back together. They never split up. I told you. This, I will be, Beyonce will release an album before September is over Kim and Kanye are not separated. They are back together 100%. Because I can tell you when Scott and I were separated, if he had have asked me to turn up in some kind of weird sex gimp outfit to promote anything he'd done, I would have told him to get directly fucked. You, like <laughs> no one's helping out their ex like that much. No one who is known for showing their body and face is turning up in a full body fucking um, stocking like if they're not still together. No one is that friendly with their ex. I'm not buying it. That's it. But she's she's very marketing savvy and very, you know, they're very, very good at getting attention. And is it couldn't it just be a case of she knows it's gonna get a shit ton of attention and you oh, know. Nah. You've never been separated. Anyone listening now, you're on board with me. There's no fucking way. But anyway, it wasn't Kanye. It was actually the creative director of Balenciaga, Demna Gusalia, and he was who was next to her. It was not Kanye. 
And I'm not even convinced it was Kim, to be honest. I don't even know. But what that, I do know uh, is she yeah. provided... Do you I think, think it's a it was brilliant Kim? new chapter? Uh, well, I, I, I must admit I didn't. I'm not, as we well know, as conspiracy minded as you. So I did just accept that it was Kim. But um, what a breakthrough, though, if she's actually hit the point where she doesn't even need to go to events anymore. Brilliant. I mean, Sia was sort of trying to pioneer it for a while there. I went to a Sia concert and I'm not even entirely sure that she performed. And, mm-hmm. and but Kim's just taken it next level. Mm-hmm. So I want everyone to know that I did it so they don't have to. And I always swore at my career in broadcasting I would never talk about the Kardashians, but here I am, obsessed with one, two, most of them. Um, so the reason she's doing the whole face covering thing is because the the vibe is that she's so famous and iconic that even when her face is covered and there's no logos and she's head to toe in black, people still know who she is. That's. Okay. Yeah. Look. Yeah. yeah. She's gone so uber famous. It's like one mark of fame is if you can be just known by one name. You don't even need a surname. But then next level is if you can be known just by just your silhouette is enough. And to be honest, she is there. But to be fair, she does have a very distinctive silhouette. Yes. So who knows? My favourite moment of the night, my favourite photo, I'll get Chella to put it up, is Kendall Jenner being forced to do up her mother Chris's shoelaces while Chris holds a cocktail and Kendall is bent down on the ground tying oh, the shoelaces God. in her stunningly and encrusted dress. just had dress. a vision of her future and, <laughs> let's face it, her present, if it wasn't locked out. Have a great day, bitch. Oh, my God. <laughs> People always say I give off big Kris Jenner vibes and I don't know how to take that because she's 60, she looks amazing, but also she's like kind of famous for selling her daughter sex tapes, start a career. You're you're too accepting of just like just just giving your children freedom to just find themselves and do whatever. You need to to get much more of a stage mother, mother vibe happening, I think. Yeah. But I, I, I respect them as business women. Like I think they've taken something that, you know, that was just kind of a little bit of celebrity and turned it into a billion-dollar empire. No one can deny the, the business acumen of that family and how well they've done. But I don't like being compared to Chris Jenner, guys, just putting it out there into the universe. It's not, it's not a thing I aspire to. I, I don't. I respect them, though. No, um, no you don't want now, a billion-dollar franchise no. necessarily. You're just happy to do love nundrums on a Friday night with a drink. <laughs> and different. even then it's not consistent. <laughs> Everyone's like, where's love nundrums been? I said, look, I felt like I was getting locked into a contract I didn't agree to. So <laughs> when, I'm very contrarious. So when people started demanding it, I got turned off doing it, and that's the truth. <laughs> that is why you're not Chris Jenner. Let's just say she meets mm, those expectations. The rule in commercial radio was as soon as you're starting to get sick of it, your audience is starting to love it. That was the rule that we used to get drummed into us. So really? that's why. Yeah. That was God, oh, so that many feels like, like a mind yeah. game. That's like just saying suppress any instinct you might feel. If you've got a vibe inside yeah. of you saying this is wrong, then it's right. <laughs> no means yes, <laughs> yes means no. Do what oh, we say. The vibes, the vibes that everything was wrong was strong. I do find working on TV shows the exact moment when you start to like think, I think I'm ready to wind this up is when is when yeah, the public goes bananas. So maybe there is some element of truth, but I still think that's think really so. suspect advice. M. Rossiano and Michael Lucas. This is, 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 is M. Salation. Now, before we, we wrap up, we obviously have to discuss Britney Spears' engagement um, to a boyfriend of five years, Sam Asgarvi. I'm really excited. You've done your research on him, I've no doubt. I don't. I don't like him. We know. I don't like him. We know. Now, she's deleted her Instagram because, and we're speculating, why did you think? I thought because so many people commented, get a prenup, Brittany, get a prenup, that that she just didn't want that energy around and she was not intending to get a prenup, so she's just thought, for now, I'm just going to delete that. Because her oh Brittany God, army was pulling her aside I and saying, this. look, Britters, we love you, we're fought for you, we want you to have right. freedom, but also we want some boundaries. <laughs> 100%. I can't stress this enough. I want you to take her by her tiny little hands and look her in those big doe eyes and say, babes, get a prenup. Get that prenup ironclad. Make him sign it in blood and lodge it where they keep the uh, the... the <laughs> 
what's the thing called? The United States, the Constitution. Wherever they keep the original Constitution, <laughs> the, <laughs> the amendments. Somewhere in the Capitol the building. Bill of I don't know where. Send it to fucking House. Washington. <laughs> she <sighs> must get a prenup. I don't like him. I don't like him. I don't trust him. I. There's, I, there have been I a don't. few people that have had a bit of a free ride on Britney's earnings for a while and, and let's not open the field to her just when she's disentangled herself from so many of them. Look, I'm, I'm happy... I'm happy for her. I'm happy that she's found some joy and some autonomy over her life and I think we're going to see a Britney Spears pregnancy in the next year. There's another prediction, 100%. Mm -hmm. Um, So I just, it's going to happen. She's going to get married. That's cool. We're going to get a wedding. You know, I love a celebrity wedding. Great, great, great. But I just must, I won't be able to sleep till I know this prenup. It's like, you know, and in this moment, I'm just going to revise. You did seem a bit like Christina right then. <laughs> I think that's what she'd say about all her daughters. <laughs> in fact, I would hope that whenever one of the Kardashian girls starts dating, like there's got to be that point when Chris comes out with the legal team and said, okay, let's just talk the clauses before we move forward. Oh, 100%. That stuff I'm on board with. Like, oh, yeah, if my daughters get very any ever get serious about a young man and it gets down, I will, they will be... They don't have, yeah. <laughs> there will be things in play. <laughs> there will be no access to the Rossiano money. Not that there's a lot of it, but, you know. No, in fact. No. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think I've, no, Maybe I don't think I've ever think sounded more like it. my mother. Sorry? I feel like, let's strike Chris Jenner from this conversation. I don't think I've ever sounded more like my own mother than with that sentence. That, that, look, that's true. It's rare that you bring up Jenny, but I'm, I'm here for it. <laughs> Oh, I feel I feel like we've done a pop culture bonanza. Before I let you go, though, it is the final episode of yes. the newsreader. For now. No, there's no announcement about a season two, but, yes, it is this Sunday night. How exciting. So, so <laughs> last Sunday, I, you wouldn't, I don't have it. I don't have access to this episode. I was able no, to I binge know. the other ones. Yeah, because we've done it. It's like Mayor of Easttown. It's not like Mayor of Easttown. There's no big, like, surprises that come in the finale. It's just hopefully a good finale. But, uh, yeah, no, I'm, I am, am did get a special person sneak preview, but only till episode yeah. five. So who, so I we've know. ended on a cliffhanger. What's going to happen? Helen was devastated. Dale was crying. How can it be resolved? Will he have sex with Tim? Who knows? Will he have sex with him? I can't tell you that. Uh, ah, I'm obsessed with those two. I'm obsessed with that relationship. I, I'm like, oh, you've just episode five. What's the dubious past that Dale has? Why was he reported for rough and tumble with the guy whose partner has oh, HIV no, AIDS? What? Like, what? Oh, Kim Draxel. So oh yeah. Look, there'll be tears. There'll be Chernobyl. <laughs> there'll be. <laughs> <laughs> so how are your feelings? Your, your baby's been birthed. It's been well received. The last step's going out. Like it's, how, are you, how are your feelings about this whole oh, exercise now? You so must be ready like, to have a sleep. I, <laughs> no, great. I feel great. Obviously, it's real, I'm so I'm, I'm unabashedly really happy that it, it's now over and we can just say that was a successful endeavour, hooray, and, um, and, and have nine eyes. That's really, really exciting. I don't recommend having a show go out at another show while you're desperately COVID shooting another show. That was exhausting in a lockdown. Not, not, not what mm. I'd recommend. Mm. Yeah, but stoked. Mm. I'm completely stoked. I'm, I'm very, very happy. And, all, and people, you know, now people abuse me about being mean to the characters. They're really concerned about Michelle Lim Davidson's character, Nolene. Tell you what, they don't like her being going through a rough trot. Jesus. But I love that. That's no, what I love I'm in her. It for. Yeah, you I want, want, I want people to abuse me. The- I know you don't. You want him to die. You've been very clear about that. Yeah, season two death needs to be. I'm sorry, S- Stephen Peacock. I'm sure you're a lovely. Actually, Michael loves you. I've been told many times you're a lovely person, but oh, I want you your would character love, to you die. You will love him if you met him. Um, you will meet him one day, and you will love him when we're not in the lockdown. Um, <laughs> no, I know. Yeah, but that's all. Right. You've, you've just got baggage. You're just dragging baggage, and I understand it. <laughs> no, fair enough. And also I am presenting, you know, I mean, I had to have one straight male character in there who was not a complete disgrace to straight males, but maybe that's not true to the reality. Maybe that's, a, <laughs> that's the biggest, most oh, fantastical I believe, element. I can't believe, I can actually now see my ADHD kicking in when I flip topics. And I realise mm. the reason we're friends is because 
I can, like, we can be in the middle of a deep conversation and then I'll say to you, oh, my God, look over there, that duck looks like it has a moustache. And you'll look over and go, it does look like it has a duck moustache. And then we'll just go back into the conversation. And often I've had friends who'll be like, oh, that's really rude what you just did. And then we don't stay friends for very long. So you're like, able to, you just come along on the journey with my brain when we're having conversations and I just weave in and out and you stay with me. And I think that's, that's why our friendship works. We haven't spoken about Madonna's bum. No. A, d- a beautiful link. And by beautiful link, I mean there was no link. Um, but you made a virtue of it. I know. Madonna showed up at the VMAs. I mean, and, and everyone thought, is she going to perform? Because she did, like, lock down all of Times Square filming for ages. And then everyone thinking, what's going to happen? The answer was just, like, this glory video. There might have been some mild filters on it of her wandering around New York. And then she literally just came out and said... And they said we wouldn't last. But we are still here, mother... That was it. But she turned around and showed the bum and poof, goodness, that's some engineering. Well, what do we think about, where did the bum, what, what do we think about the bum? Look, <laughs> I'm going to say, I'm going to say there might have been some scientific uh, interventions oh, there. And she, <laughs> I'm, look, I, I love her. Obviously, she's like my spiritual mother, but I think girlfriend has had some some bum implants. She's had some <gasps> bum implants, yep. I think she's had butt implants and I, do, I, I genuinely do because if oh, you well, want to no, go back I don't and think there's any question. Go back to the hung up video clip and that you. bit where she's going against the mirror and we're from behind yep, and we see it and yep. she she had a very, very toned but very flat derriere and let's Correct. just say that is not the case these days but all power no. to her. <laughs> yep. Fine, whatever, but she's debuted it. I mean, how long? Because bum implant surgery, I imagine, is a long recovery. So, I mean, when did she slip those in? And she wouldn't be able to sit down. Maybe that's what, I mean. Is that, yeah, that, that would was be a reveal. weird thing with bum implants, wouldn't it? Like, do you just have to sort of lie yeah. on your stomach for weeks? I don't know, but I don't know. Whatever she wants. I mean. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Go, Madge. Whatever she's going want, down the but- share route of just she'll. She'll look, yeah, she'll look like a sort of a digitally created impression of Madonna. And, you mm. know, the, I mean, the, <laughs> what sure. else would we want That's for the one and only do, queen but... of pop? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm happy for her to do whatever she wants to her body and face. I mean, she's, she's earned it. Her Who concert's are we to tell coming her on otherwise? Paramount Plus soon, so we'll be, I mean, I, it's probably just going to be you and I, the, the audience members for that. No, there'll be a few, get Daniel Garnier if you're it's listening. Be few. Daniel and, Garnier, um, yes. Yeah. We'll break yes, it down because yes. I got to see that one in LA and unfortunately M could not, could devastatingly. Not. No. That's fine. It's fine. All right, off you go. Um, good luck for the last episode on Sunday night. How exciting. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks for watching. What, watch Everybody watching the newsreader, ABC, 8.30, or catch it on iView. It's a show that's rating over a million, so whatever. Doesn't even need your help. <laughs> thanks to iView, yes. <laughs> thanks and to thanks to all the emsolators. Thank you. All right. <laughs> all right. Thanks, babes. Bye. This is Emsolation. Okay. Wow. That was a lot of me talking and Michael being amused. (laughs) I'm sorry. I promise you he was happy with that. He's like right at the tail end of filming Five Bedroom Season 3. So, like, he's he's just happy to sit there and be entertained. Hey, um, I've got some news for you next week. We have new merch. Yay! So we're doing, you know, the hoodie with that beautiful print on the front of the Magical Unicorn of Death and the Enchanted Seahorse of Hope. We're doing a T-shirt version of that for our friends in the warmer climates and also coming into summer and spring, guys. So if you would like to get that, we were going to obviously sell merch at the Great Australian Podcast Festival, which has been cancelled. So... You can get this merch online now, which is great. We're also doing a restock of the Maximalist Power Queen T-shirt. So next week at mrussiano.com, middle of next week, you'll be able to get a two new T-shirts, which is great. Thank you so much. It really helps support the podcast. <laughs> and um, the other thing I want to say is please stop harassing me about my singer. Oh, my God. This is nuts. Crazy. Every season. I get bombarded. The first season I was, I think I was a dragonfly or a a unicorn or maybe last year I was a dragonfly. Like I got accused of being lightning today. I think Danny Minogue said I was on, was lightning. I got lots of messages. 
The M Solation Facebook group has become a full-time conspiracy theorist group. You are like, I love it. It is so entertaining. And I just want to say, if you guys thinking that I'm on this show is entertaining you, go forth. It is amazing. Some of the comparisons you're drawing, it's just... <laughs> Anyway, if you want a fun time, go to the M Solation Facebook group because you guys... No, look, I'm happy. You've got a hobby. It's a lockdown hobby, but my God, I always know when that show's on. No matter, at least I know it's not dying down, you know, because any time that's on, I start getting it. You're on The Masked Singer. I'm four different masks this year, so guys, make up your mind. All right, that's it from me. Have a great week. And as always, please tell a friend about us. It's the best way for us to get out there. Um, and that's it. That's all I want to say. God, it'll be a long one this week. Woo-hoo-hoo-hoo! Bye, guys. M Salation with M Rossiano is a Spotify exclusive podcast hosted by M Rossiano with Michael Lucas. Executive produced by Benjamin Wosley. Produced by M Rossiano. Edited by Ezekiel Fenn at Entente Music. With videos by Liam O'Brien. Socials by Marcella Rossiano Barrow. With assistance from Jem Evans and Georgia Watts. Plus occasional technical wizardry, wine, and coffee from M. Dad Vinci. Get more Emsolation by following the Emsolation podcast on Instagram, where you can also sign up for our weekly newsletter. You can join other Emsolators at the Emsolation group on Facebook. The answer is Harry Styles. If you love what we do, share this podcast with a friend and make sure you're following us on the Spotify app. Thanks for taking time out to listen to this week's episode, and we look forward to chatting with you again soon.